Hey guys, this is Mike Lane from Tattoo.com, sitting here with bass player extraordinaire Derek from the one and only Suffocation. What's up, brother? How you guys doing? Thank you so much. Dude, doing first well. of all, blistering set right now. These guys just kicked ass at the Summer Slaughter. So much fun. We're having a blast. The bands are killer. The people are coming out. We're killing it. Uh, the bands, all the bands are doing really well, and we're having a lot of fun. Awesome, man. Well, listen, we are going to start at the beginning. We are just going to oh, yeah. rewind. For nice. you guys don't know, or the kids that just didn't happen to be around in the 90s, there was a huge backyard party scene. Oh. Deprecated, discord, so sick. detriment, Jesus sexism. Flash, you got, yeah, all the bands. <laughs> dude, it was just, it was insane. Lepra, Kangrana, Turning of the Yeah, Gears, so dude. So many sick bands. Oh, my Entity, God, you know, There was dude. so many. Yeah, man. It was, it was crazy. Great era. It great was. Era. And you know we there would be like 300 kids there yeah. slamming and that moshing. backyard party slamming in the mud, <laughs> people falling, fighting and drinking. It was, it was a great era, fun era to grow up in. Don't get me started, man. We're gonna no. bust out the shots here right, in a minute. Right, right. But anyway, starting from there, just so they know where you're coming from, how did someone like yourself playing in the local scene all of a sudden tour bus suffocation? I mean, just give everyone the story the, the fast way through that was uh, you know I knew I was gonna work really hard and uh, I knew that I was going as far as I could take this and I knew I cared a lot about what I was doing and I was really aware of uh, what was going on and you know when I saw the big bands come through town I was like what are they doing that we're not doing and you know obviously they have many years of experience that it's gonna take us that time to catch up with but uh, having that commitment surrounding yourself with the right people talking to uh, you know the right people and you have to talk to everybody to find out who's the right guy you know and so being at the right place at the right time uh, always helps and so the more you put yourself out there the more likely you're gonna run into the people you need to be talking to so uh, really inspired by the big boys and just sticking it out with the young guns and uh, so the long story short is you know working my way up the ladder and uh, you know doing my own stuff like deprecated then joining like a national like disgorge and then disgorge led me to deeds of flesh and we did, you know, some stuff where I was just a stagehand helping Deeds of Flesh out, and then I uh, flew out with Deeds and Fetus. Killer band, by the way. So killer, much fun. Killer band. Such a great era. Check them out if you don't know. Deeds of Flesh, mid '90s, super intense. Just stuff. unstoppable. So yeah, I started stagehanding and uh, just being like a roadie and helping out Deeds. Uh, six weeks North America, so Deeds of Flesh and Dying Fetus touring together. Next thing you know, um, Deeds bass player falls off. Deeds hires me, so I go out and I do that stuff. Dying Fetus' bass player falls out, Dying Fetus hires me, all the while I'm doing the deprecated stuff at home with my boys and inconsequentially like AJ's here tonight, Tori's in tomorrow, so a lot of old time reunion guys and uh, so the next thing you know, I'm working with Deeds, I'm working with Fetus and each one of them kind of starts leading me to the next guy so I meet Tim Young who was uh, recently playing with Mortal right, Angel right. and uh, Tim had done a Hate Eternal record in 1998, Conquering the Throne, that was unbelievable. So when I met Tim, I was like, oh, how you doing? Nice to meet you, like intimidated. And uh, so when I was playing with Fetus, I met Tim, came off the road with Fetus, and uh, hired Tim Young to do the Decrepit Birth. The Decrepit Birth record and Time Begins drops, and then Tim goes home after recording it, and goes, hey, you want to come do Vital Remains with me, Glenn Benton's. Yeah, another, another great band. De Christianized the era. So I go, what do you mean? Isn't Benton going to play bass and sing? And he goes, no, he just wants to sing. So there's my end. It goes from, you know, Deeds to Fetus, Fetus to uh, Decrepit Birth, Decrepit Birth to Vital Remains. And then uh, playing with Tim Young and Glenn Benton and those guys, we did Milwaukee Metal Fest and Suffocation Reforms. Yeah. After five year hiatus, they come back on the scene and uh, Vital Remains is direct support to Suffocation. Suffocation's first show back, right. first or second. Uh, suffocation pulls me aside and they're like, yo, uh, I don't know if you have any interest in playing in Suffocation, but we want you. So it's like your favorite supermodel who's rich, wants to marry you, and you're just like, wow. So being at the right place at the right time, working really hard, knowing that I was going to do this one way or another, and whether I made it myself or joined some of the godfathers, and, and ended up working, you know, working my way up the ranks and ended up in my, my dream spot. And now it's been, you know, five albums, and uh, next thing you know, um, we're gonna do, uh, you know, Suffocation's tenth album will be recorded this year, and uh, I've done which like, we're gonna get to. By yeah, the way. yeah, I've got a little we're preview. I can this. play a little piece for you guys. Hush, <laughs> hush. But uh, so we're ready to go and uh, finish Summer Slaughter, go home, record the new record, Suffocation's tenth album, and uh, it's just been a wild ride. But I'm so proud to be here, and I've you know done all the albums, done the videos, you know, done 1,200 plus worldwide shows with the band right. in the last uh, 13 years. 
so it's 13 years now with suffocation. Well, first of all, congratulations. And I remember when this all went down, we were yeah. all so stoked for you, man. So sick. You know, I mean, Suffocation is one of those bands that literally wrote the book in death metal. And um, if anyone watching, if you don't know who Suffocation is, um, your computer should be destroyed. There's a lot of homework. <laughs> you got a lot of homework. But definitely start at the beginning. Um, let's get into some of the shows, man. Like, how was it playing, you know, overseas to playing the clubs to all of a sudden playing for, you know, 50,000 plus people and stuff. It's shocking. Tower Tops. Pan that camera around. The man right Mr. there. Hobbs. Cheers, everybody. Super killer. So, nice you know, see working with my favorite musicians me, and uh, taking on, taking on, uh, you know, some of these, these smaller stages and then the bigger events and like, you know, the first time you walk out and there's 50,000 people there and you're like, your heart starts going and you go, wait a minute, wait a minute, these people are here, you know, I need to feed off of them, not be afraid of them. And uh, we did the show for like 50,000 people and then the next day we played for 350 people. I felt like I knew wow. everyone in the building. That's awesome. And then we played for 12,000 people the next day and it felt so comfortable. And uh, we've been doing a lot of those larger format, you know, European festivals, uh, some of the stuff down in South America is really big. And so it's just been a wild ride and like the learning curve has been crazy, but you know, having so many, you know, two decades of playing bass, over two decades of playing the instrument, feeling real comfortable, knowing all the songs, and uh, it's just a, we're really fortunate that, that people like what we do. Well, it's always great just to see um, death metal on a big platform, you know, yeah. Cannibal, Suffocation, playing the big Blast. festivals, you know, Cannibal did um, not fest last year. Huge. So it's always great for someone yeah. like us just growing up into yeah. it where everyone can see it now and it's just out there and it's just readily available and That's hopefully awesome. it just blows up and you guys are at the forum but <laughs> so killer anyway um some other stuff that everyone's just so curious about um frank's out playing tonight ricky's doing a killer job he's doing great so what's going on with frank i know he has a job but for people that don't know can you kind of wrap that up for them frank mullen you know he's the one that came up with a lot of the stuff in the early days uh he's been there from the beginning it's one of those things he's got some real life commitments and uh you know we want the band to be our life and uh, you know, having a home life outside of the band is really hard on a relationship. I'm doing my best to maintain one, an adult relationship, and it's really hard, you know, because you're trying to be in two places at the same time. So if you can get your sweetheart out to you, if you can, you know, spend your time when you're not in the studio or not on the road with your loved ones, it works. But you know, Frank's got some real life stuff going on that he's doing the new record. He just did Montreal with us uh, last week. You know, he'll do the New York shows. He'll do. The European festivals, but unfortunately, his job doesn't allow him to take off as much time as you know. In the last 13 years, work with him, you know, there was times where the band was his job, and then there was times where he'd work a job that would give him a decent amount of time off. And now the position that he's, uh, you know, worked his way up to with his company gives him basic normal two-week vacation, you know, no extra time. Right, so right. Frank basically does the weekend shows. He's going to be doing the new record. He's awesome. We'll have Ricky on there. You know, so there's a little mix and match, and we're stoked. I mean, it's unfortunate that he can't do everything, but he's he's still got his heart into it. He just can't be in two places okay. at the same time. Cool. Well, that clears that up. We are going to put Suffocation on pause, and we are going to get to why we are here in the first place, the ink. So let's start with what you got going on, man. You got a lot. Well, you know, um, born year of the snake in the Chinese year, so we went ahead and did these serpents. All my work is done by John Zig, skin graver. Everything from head to toe? Yeah, well, uh, every piece that I have is uh, of Zig. And uh, he's just a beast of a dude, real fast. You know, when I tell him what he did on this, he's like, are you sure? Because, I, you know, he flies through this stuff. He's like, you know, put your arm, you know, put your arm out, we'll make a couple little marks. And he gets in there and he does like, you know, he basically puts a bunch of marks on you based on like your geometry, you know, the your shape, your your physical shape. And then he just goes back and starts drawing these little lines and you're just watching the thing materialize right in front of your eyes. So Chinese year, year of the snake, we did these really crazy looking snakes. And then uh, over here, I was inspired as a young kid when I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger cut and pull the flesh <laughs> off. There was like machines, so we wired a processor into the nerve endings. And uh, you know, I got a radius and ulna are titanium with the real veins. I have hydraulic pistons wow. as my uh, tendons and the same thing like ripped up, burned up flesh and then underneath there's machines under it's my killing. skin, you know. It, so. it kind of has like a Paul Booth vibe. Yeah, very well, biomechanical, when, Booth, you know? when Booth saw this piece, he was interested in yeah. doing this piece because uh, Booth's done a bunch of stuff on Frank and former members and so I was like, you know, I'm going to get Booth my back. Yeah. He's oh, a, nice. he's a fan okay. of, he's he's a fan of the band. 
he's a fantastic yeah. artist, great guy. Like I said, when he saw this, he wanted to do this one, and I, I wanted to keep some, you know, evenness. And uh, but like I said, I'll give Booth my chest. What's going to be on the something. back? Exclusive? Uh, Can we be there when you do it? Let's do that. All let's, right. Let's put you guys in on that. So Done. and then uh, we went on further, and we did, um, you know, like a pile of like, like demonic skulls, like getting hit by a cyclone. So we got like, you know, tons of like this really crazy, you know, skeletal stuff getting all wrapped around me. And uh, yeah, he's just a sick dude. I'm digging the black and white. Yeah, I, everything I do is black and gray. I just, I'm not a really colorful guy. I want it to be neutral. And then this is the newest thing that we did. This is like a big black white, black widow spider that, uh, I don't know if we get the best lighting, but uh, the black widow spider like has all these eggs and they're like mites, like attacking. So there's like all these like infested, like, you know, mites trying to get to the spider eggs. So just trying to be really gross, you know, make it really nasty. And I think I'm going to see him and we're going to do some touch up. And uh, that's the thing, like we, we work so fast and I only see him when I'm on tour. Okay. I'll stop into Austin, I'll bang out like a bunch of stuff. And then the next time I see him, we'll, we'll finish it. So like this, you know, I sat with him a couple times. We've got to do a little bit more work to tie in and just button it up. But most of these are buttoned up and this one I feel is pretty buttoned up. But this one just needs that one last sit and uh, it'll be sick. Yeah. I'm super stoked. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. So in, in, is there any, uh, what's the first one you got? I and is there any here. meaning to it? Did, did you get the first one like, yeah, with something was, in mind? This was this was the first piece. It's these two tails with these two heads. And if you follow them around, you know, like you can find, when it was just this piece, there was just the two tails that wrap all tangle around it too. And then the next time I saw him, we started going up and doing the rest of this. And then the time after that I saw him, we did this forearm. And then the time after that we did this piece, and then maybe the time after that we, because they go all the way up, okay. you know, they, all the way up on the shoulder pieces and stuff. So it would be like I'd sit with them like three times per piece, mm -hmm. and so like I need the third sitting with this okay. one because I've done the first and second. Now we got to button it up. We did the first and second, then we tighten it up. Same thing with this one, two, and then then do all the like white and stuff. And then the same. This was one. And then we did all this too, and I think the third time was this, and then buttoning it all up. So I still have one last sitting with him for this, get him to go all the way down, but uh, I love his work. He's done a couple album covers for us. He did our Blood Oath album cover. He did our self-titled. Um, you'll see some of our merch. We can do a cutaway and show awesome. you some of the other t-shirts and stuff that he did for this tour. So uh, we brought two new designs out from him for this tour, and uh, he's just an awesome guy, fantastic artist, really fast tattoos too. I mean, I sit for a couple hours and it's like, <laughs> you know, so. Really good stuff. Love the cool, guy. Cool, cool. Well, is there anyone that should be listening right now that you want them to tattoo you? Is there anyone that you got I your mean, eye on? I really think I don't want to, you know, pull punches because there's a lot of really good guys out there. But I think I'm a, I'm a two trick pony. I, I want Zig on my limbs and Booth and, on the back and Booth on my back and chest. Done. And that's Done. a wrap. Two guys. Well, listen, we are going to go back to suffocation right now. Sick. So. Um, you guys are going to see we have some clips of you guys playing live. Sick. You were playing the sickest bass. So let's talk about the bass that you got made for you. This is such a cool story. Um, basically, this guy in, in Dieseldorf, Germany, um, is a fantastic luthier, young gentleman, and uh, really, really meticulous. Like my German engineered car that I love so much, my BMW M3. It's all nice. about the German engineering. So this guy's you woodworking get skills. From that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. So the BMW car, the German car, the German bass. Uh, everything is custom handmade on it. You know, there's a bunch of different woods, Red Heart, Rock Maple, Wenge, Poplar. There's graphite and stainless steel in the construction of this instrument. So we'll do some cutaways and show you that thing. And uh, it's just amazing. Fan frets, uh, no tuning pegs, all the tuning's done up here. The stainless steel hoof to plant that thing in the ground, you know, my one of a kind That's style, awesome, you know. Man. So it's a, it's a beautiful instrument. Plays great, sounds great, looks amazing. Yeah, that thing was a monster on stage. Yeah. And going back, if you don't know Derek, his style is playing super low, and it was really cool to see the bass actually touching the bass ground. Bass on the ground, and I didn't even uh, mention the, the final touch. The name of the company is The Devil's Choice. <laughs> so this, Perfect. this particular model's the Trap Jaw, and uh, you can check him out. Uh, just you know, do a search online for The Devil's Choice, and you'll see this guy makes fantastic guitars and basses. And uh, there's a ton of good stuff out there. I think I'm the only guy in the States playing and yeah. they're over in Europe and stuff like that. So 
I'm trying to be like a representative and try to get more people to play his instruments because they're the dynamite. They well, it was it was a monster up there, and yeah. it sounded great too. Hell yeah! I mean, the set was just awesome. Killer, you know, short you. and sweet, and just killer. Yeah, you know? Summer Slaughter's putting us on really early and giving us a really short set, but we just come in, and knock the teeth out of everybody's mouths, and, and get on to the next sound. That's all you got to do. That's you know, one night stand in and out. That's it. Bang, <laughs> bang them out. So, um, going to the supplication. So, what should we expect? For the future of suffocation, I know you guys have a new drummer. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a lot of good stuff going on. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't ever want it to look like a revolving door. You know, if we get someone, we want this person to be permanent. Some people can't make the commitments. You know, we want to do more. And then, you know, they want to like, you know, some guys, like I'll use an example, guys want to cut singles and tour on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And we're like, that's not the kind of band we are. You know, we want to cut albums and tour the world. So, uh, like I said, we're about to put out the 10th. 10th full-length album or the 10th release of the band and uh, we got the new album pretty much written. We got a couple of new guys, Charlie Arrigo is doing great, um, took over Guy Marche's right. position, Guy had some other real life issues come up and unfortunately couldn't commit to the level that we needed him to and uh, nothing personal, we love the guy, um, you know he just wasn't in a position to do what we needed to do and so we said you know Guy do what you got to do, we love you and you know we'll grab some young blood and get out and kill it. So Charlie's been shredding on the guitar. Cool. And then uh, recently, Mr. Kevin Talley, something similar, not in a position to go forward with what we're trying to do. So uh, we picked up Eric Marotti and he's fuck, he's dynamite. This kid's unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I got turned on to him by, uh, I called up Alex, the vocalist of Despise Icon, see if I could borrow Alex Grind, the drummer of Despise Icon for this tour. And he said, you know, nothing territorial about it. Um, the reason why Alex Grind the reason why Despise Icon isn't touring full time is because Alex has daughters and a job, and you know he needs to be home for his family. So was, uh, yeah, and so yeah, they're a bass player as well. So it was one of those things where Alex uh, from Despise Icon goes, "I don't want to say I got your guy, but I got your guy," yeah. and he turned me on to this dude. And uh, yeah. he, in like three weeks, he picked up twelve songs, and he's just been out slaying it. He's well, killing to, it. Well, to fill Mike Smith's shoes, I mean, come on. You got. You got yeah. Mike Smith, you got Dave Call Ross, Doug Bone, you know, and then recently Kevin Talley been doing a lot of the Doug live Bone, stuff. Man. Doug Pierce Bone, Pearson within. Yeah. Super good record. So Eric's not afraid to play any of these guys' stuff, you know, where certain drummers like don't want to go yeah. play Call Ross stuff and some guys don't have the groove to play the Mike Smith stuff. And so you gotta get a well rounded guy who's uh you know also committed. You know, yeah. you gotta get a guy that, that can not only do it but physically and mentally be able to do it as well. Yeah. So uh, Eric seems to be killer. Yeah. He's a really great, fun dude, and he's a monster. He's a monster behind his kit. Well, you guys definitely have it together, man. It's selling better than ever. Thank you. So for everyone out there, how can they get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of Suffocation? See what's going on? The best way, I think, to get in touch with Suffocation is uh, through the social media outlets, you know, Facebook, what do you got, Instagram, you know, Twitter, all that stuff. I don't personally play with that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of kid stuff yes and it's great don't get me wrong it's a great way for people to to listen to your stuff and find your stuff you know you can obviously get with nuclear blast nuclear blast has a bunch of it's our record label have a bunch of like you know music videos and same thing with prior prior albums uh, relapse records will have some some stuff push in the band you know from previous releases right. so um yeah i'd say you know just search google for suffocation band yeah. And uh, you can get on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure you can pretty much yeah. listen to, to everything. Yeah. But if you if you like what you hear, come to the shows. You right. know, support the band, buy the T-shirts. You know, record sales aren't what they used to be. People are just downloading, and I'm not gonna say, you know, oh, don't download our songs. I will say if you like what you hear when you're downloading, come to the show, support. Not support it when a record right. comes out, buy it. Yeah. You know, support the bands. Otherwise, the bands aren't gonna be yeah. around. You know, because they're gonna go. You know what? Everybody's just taking everything. Uh, as much as we want to come and play, we love yeah. playing for the people, but you know, you can't go into debt doing yeah. what you love. So a lot of kids these days and younger bands are saying, well, you can't make a living doing that. That's just absolutely not true. Yeah. You can make you can make a good living doing it. You have to have that lineup. You have to have good people on your team, good management, good booking agencies, a good record label that believes in your band, and then putting on a good show is really what solidifies you. you know, these bands put out good records and it's all studio magic. Yeah. So Suffocation's a live band. Come Still see us. Still doing it the real deal. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't we don't get too caught up with all the editing. If you don't like what you did, rather than editing it, just play it again. Exactly. Play it until you like the way it sounds. You can get in there and move shit around until you're blue in the face and I've been guilty of experimenting yeah. with it. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you find out 
just play it. Yeah. Just play it if you don't like Which it. Which is the magic of music. By that's the way. I mean, yeah. Ultimately, you can you can edit anything, but guess what? You're gonna come. You can't edit in real time for a show. You need yeah. to have your band on lock. That's so it. do your homework. Yeah. Do your rehearsing. Get on the stage. We're a live band. You know the the studio stuffs just so people can enjoy the stuff repeatedly and, and until we get there That's it. to come smashing it. So down. in other words, everyone get off the couch, come to a suffocation show, support, buy the shirts, buy the CDs. They still make CDs, by the way. They do. Anyway, Records. for Tattoo.com, I am Mike Lane, here with Derek from Suffocation. Awesome. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you, guys.